Hi everyone, this is Kieran Oversapien for Filmstorm Studios and I'm bringing you guys another Playmaker and Unity tutorial requested by a fan and his name is Danny J and he asks Can you please show me how to make a small tutorial on having a fire and grenade on the left and right trigger on a game controller? So basically he wants to have a game controller plugged in and using the input system which you can find in here I'm going to hook up the two triggers on the left and right and that way when you fire on the right we'll fire some bullets and on the left we'll create a grenade and throw the grenade so let me show you how to make that so since we're going to be throwing grenade we want to make sure all of our objects in our scene have rigid bodies on them and they're all kinematic so let's go around and make sure so that's kinematic 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 and kinematic and kinematic and there's a little sneaky enemy back here from our and this map this map is actually our from our FPS tutorial system that is on our um, YouTube channel so make sure um, you check it out if you want to create the same scene and the same player and I'll show you how to do that in a couple of tutorials alrighty so what we want to do now is go to our player and we want to create a new spawn point for our grenade so let's go grenade spawn point drop that down right there and we want to make sure we position this um, just outside of this guy's collision box. So let's jump into his uh, see his character controller here. So we want to make sure that we put the grenade just outside of it, which you can see we have. So it's outside of it. So then when we spawn it, it's not going to the rigid body is not going to get caught inside the the player's geometry, and the player will sketch out a little bit. Alrighty, so let's start. Let's make our grenade that we're going to throw. Let's call this guy grenade. Grenade, grenade, there we go. And we want to create a rigid body. And let's bring this guy, whoops, I kind of moved him down. Let me bring him up. There we go. And move this guy, oh, I'm moving him down again. There we go. Let's bring this guy up. And now, of course, we don't want the grenade to be this big, but it is important to have him, the, the grenade, actually a good size, otherwise, it will fall through the collision. So let's let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it let's make it about that big. Let's press F to focus on it. So that's going to be our grenade. And we can leave the gravity on and let's always turn the collision to continuous so it's continuously detecting um, collisions. So what we want to do now is create a new FSN and we're going to call this oops, we're going to call this add force cuz we're going to add a force, add frock. We're going to add force to it um, which is going to propel it forward and up as soon as it spawns and then the force will die off. So let's go to force and we're going to say add force. We're going to make it move forward. Let's make it about one. Um, sometimes these values are quite strong. So let's let's just make it one and one and the world um, to self. And let's just split the view so that way we can see what's going to happen. Uh, let me turn down our little icons. This is how you can make the um, FSM logos and cameras and stuff uh, more visible. As you can see, this increases the size of the gizmos. So you can actually make it small so that way you can see around it. So it's still in there, but it makes it more visible for the um, objects around it. So let me press play and let's see what happens to our ball. So see how it just fell straight down. So we're obviously going to need more force. So let's let's come back to our FSM. Let's, let's call this add force. And let's move him forward 10. Let's see what happens now. So, oh, see now it's got a bit of a bit more of a force. So let's let's make this about 50. What's 50 going to do for us? So yeah, now we're getting we're getting a bit more. So this is doing the opposite. So we're going to want to probably pump this to about 250. There we go. See, you actually have to crank this one up a lot. Sometimes it's the opposite, you want to put it in points. So let's make it a thousand. There you go. So maybe, I reckon maybe 750 might be a sweet point for us. So 750 and let's make this guy maybe 200 for going up. There we go. So that will do for the time being for our grenade. So let's pop this back here so we have a full view again. Alrighty, so this is our grenade. Let's create a prefab so we can instance it when we're in the game. Grenade. And we're going to just drag our grenade onto the grenade. And let's just deactivate it for the time being because 
we don't want it to activate when the game runs. Now let's go into our player and what we want to do is go to our, I think it's in our rifle, I think our rifle handles our bullets and what we want to do is we want to actually talk and get a um, input for the trigger. So right, ma right now we have our mouse button, it's finding our mouse button. So if we press play, when I put my ma left mouse button down, you'll notice it creates the objects for us and it's doing the loop down here. So what we need to do is activate it for the trigger. So I actually have my controller here and if I, um, I can actually still move around because the left stick on the controller is automatically um, hooked up. But uh, it will be another tutorial to show you how to make the right stick hook up because that's um, quite, it's a little bit complicated. So I'm just going to show you how to make the, um, the bullets and the left trigger work, the right and left trigger, and then another tutorial um, which is actually going to be quite soon um, in the FPS series because I need to implement the controller. So look out for that. Alrighty, so let's jump out of here, put the controller down. Um, let's jump out of here and bring this guy up. And we're going to call it one called get axis. And this guy is going to find the axis of fire one, which is our shooting, um, our shooting input button. <laughs> because technically, um, let me jump to a web page. Where are we? A web page. So this is um, the Xbox 360. This is on at the Unity 3D wiki. And this is kind of gives you a base of what um, axes are, what buttons on the controller. So as you can see, the third axis is the triggers, but if you actually go up here, the left trigger is the ninth axis and the right trigger is the 10th axis. So we want to say when a fire, when we fire, we want to, oh, actually, let's just quickly create a float. We're going to say fire one. Let's hook that into here because we're going to store that. So basically what we want to say is when we push fire one, we want to, we want to get the axis 10 and compare that if it's one or zero, because that's going to say one or one is pushed in and zero is not. So let's go to our input. Fire one, we're going to say uh, joystick axis, because that's the type. We're going to be pushing in a button. And we're going to get the tenth axis, I believe it was. The right trigger is the tenth axis. Tenth axis, lovely. And we don't need a button, so let's get rid of that. That can all be empty. Alrighty, so now let's go back to our rifle and we're going to do a float compare. So if fire one is equal to one, we're going to say is firing every frame. So make sure that's checked every frame. Let's copy this two and paste that in here. And then we're going to reverse it. We're going to say if it's equal to zero, we're going to stop firing. So now you'll notice, let's close that action zone, let's drag that down and let me bring up my controller. So this is my controller right now. And as you notice, I'm pushing in the right trigger and look at that, we're actually firing um, bullets. Now I, I'm pressing the right trigger right now on the controller. And now if I use the mouse, it seamlessly switches over and now you can actually still click clicking and pushing the button on the joystick. So that's pretty handy. So now what I want to show you is how can we hook up the left trigger to create the grenade. And that's theoretically the exact same system as this guy. So let's pretty much just copy component and we're going to paste component as new. We're going to call this guy um, grenade system. And we're going to go dive into it and we want to quickly go back to our input and we want to set up fire two to get rid of that positive button and let's jump in and make that a joystick axis and we're going to make this guy the ninth because the ninth one is the left trigger so let's make it the ninth trigger and let's jump back to our rifle this is our grenade system and then we're going to say fire, instead of fire, I'm going to call this throw grenade. Throw grenade. Perfect. And we, we want the spawn point to be the grenade spawn point that we had before. Or actually, we, want, we might want to put the, the spawn point under um, the FPS camera. 
because that will um, it will move around with the camera then, which will be handy. So let's jump back to the rifle, and we want to make the spawn point spawn point for the grenade, and we're going to be spawning the grenade. Where is it? This guy. And double check, make sure you drag in the prefab and not this guy, otherwise it won't work. Once this guy, if you destroy him, this will be empty and then you won't be able to do anything. Alrighty, so we want, we want the right mouse button. And once we release that, it's going to go back and we're going to say right mouse button for this. Just for this demonstration, the right mouse button is the left stick, the left trigger on the controller. And let's change all of these. We're going to say fire two. Uh, we'll create a new variable. This guy is going to be fire two. You can just rename it. Now you can notice it changed everything for us. So we just save time and call this guy fire two. And technically everything should be all set up for us now. Let's give it a go and see what happens. So I'm picking up the controller. So right stick, right trigger, sorry, shooting. Left trigger, we're credit creating a grenade. And you can pretty much spam the trigger and create lots of rigid bodies. And since our system's um, been really well designed, you'll notice we're getting really good frame rates still. We're getting around 60 frames per second. Of course, let's we'll just spam um, balls in. You'll notice the frame rate might drop a tiny bit. And it's actually it's holding up quite well. And of course these aren't real grenades, otherwise we would probably be dead by now, judging by the explosion amount. So now we can shoot, bang, 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 bang. We can throw some grenades. And in the next tutorial in the FPS series, I'm gonna be adding a jump feature. So you can press A or space, and you'll be able to jump. And you'll also, I'll also show you how to um, set up the look on the right stick of the controller. And just for your reference, I'm actually using an Xbox One controller using a couple of drivers I found online. So yeah, we just jumped out of that and that's pretty much the tutorial. Um, I hope you found this interesting and I hope Danny J um, finds this interesting because he was the one who requested it. But of course, if anyone has any questions about um, this tutorial or any other tutorials, or if you want to make a request, just let me know and I will get onto it as soon as I can. Uh, but this has been Kieran Sapien for Filmstorm Studios and I will see you guys in the next FPS system tutorial. Alright guys, see you then.